Hello, and welcome to the OSE North America Production Printing Webcast. This is part of our Presco Business Development Program designed to help OSE customers succeed with digital printing. This is a listen-only webcast. However, we encourage you to submit your questions anytime during the webcast. You may do so by typing a question in the Ask a Question box on your webcast screen. We will answer all questions either during or after the speaker presentations. You can also use the Share This icon at the bottom of your screen to post automated information about today's webcast to your favorite social media channels. Today's OSE Presco webcast is the last of a three-part series, moving from PSP to MSP. Part one and two covered trends and business plan modifications new to make the transition. You can view those webcasts on the Presco website at www.mypressgo.com. During this third webcast, Matt Reese from InfoTrends and Bob Boucher of Cole Creative will be discussing go-to-market strategies for successfully transitioning your business. Welcome, Matt. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Matthew Reese, and I'm a senior consultant for InfoTrends Business Development Team, and welcome to our third installation in this three-part series titled Moving from a PSP to an MSP. In this webinar and last webinar in the three-part series, we're going to review how to develop an effective go-to-market strategy and review how OSA customers have successfully transformed their business through the development of a solid go-to-market strategy. And you may be asking yourself, why after three webinars, are we still talking about making this transition? Well, and the answer really is because there is a transition underway. In our recent study titled The Evolution of the Cross-Media Marketing Services Provider, the survey demographics indicated a trend to repositioning among firms that offer cross-media marketing services. Service providers currently offering cross-media marketing services were more likely to describe themselves as cross-media marketing service providers and marketing service providers. And in one-on-one -on -one interviews we conducted, 30 of them backed this up. The top firms we talked to all repositioned their firms by either dropping print from their name, kept print and added other descriptors, or created a spin-off company, and with good reason. What we're finding really is, is that firms are placing an emphasis, that firms that are placing an emphasis on making this transition have made changes in the type of people that they're hiring and the new roles that they're creating within these organizations. Again, it compares responses, this information compares responses from firms that offered these services and those that did not. And firms offering cross-media marketing services were twice as likely to indicate that sales marketing, and business development were roles that had a C-level focus. The critical message is that success in cross-media requires leadership with a focus on marketing and business development. And strong leadership really is required to make the organizational changes necessary to adapt to what's taking place in the marketplace. <clears throat> and for those of you that have been with us for the previous webinars, you'll all be familiar with this slide, but I want to emphasize the changes taking place in the market and why you need to think about where your business is headed and where you ultimately want your business to be. What we're seeing in the marketplace is that there is a huge transition underway from black and white to color with the biggest implications for offset print production and monochrome digital printing. <clears throat> Businesses are moving away from long-run manufacturing models whose focus was on low-cost unit pricing and warehousing and are, are embracing electronic delivery where possible. And where this isn't possible, the need for quick turnaround, short run, and targeted materials that draw on digital print's ability to be a virtual warehouse of documents is emerging. And there are significant digital color opportunities aligned with, com with commercial print markets and print service provider competencies. These opportunities really lie in promotional material applications, general office applications such as business cards and letterheads, consumer applications such as photo merchandise, and fine art reproductions. And the shift in delivery that's taking place in the, in, is really happening in web-enabled shipments. We're noticing that year-over-year -year growth in total print shipments remains very low, and the volume of business that is transitioning from web to print is experiencing high growth. And as you're all aware, the automation and advantages that come with web to print are, in fact, new products in themselves 
that service providers are taking advantage of and are offering to their consumers. And I'm going to keep emphasizing that while investment in traditional marketing channels has been decreasing over the past few years, marketing consumables still make up a significant portion of the, market, of the marketing mix. According to the Chief Marketing Officer Council study on the marketing supply chain, 30% of marketers surveyed spent 20 to 30% of their budget on marketing materials. Printed collateral topped the list of, of materials produced. The traditional supply chain, however, is broken, and marketers are increasingly searching for solutions to manage it. In our past webinars, we talked about the volume of, of obsolescent materials marketers have on hand, the inefficiencies of procuring marketing material, and the lack of inventory management. Marketers recognize that it's time to focus and fix the chain and focus on optimizing market dollars and, and are turning to the experts for help. And as we saw earlier, the growing number of web-to-print solutions are aiding marketers in taking what was an interconnected system of complex relationships with little to no measurement and efficiency and transform that into a manageable web-based catalog of products that allow marketers the ability to free up time and capital to pursue activities aligned with creating a positive return for the company. And while print isn't dead, it's clearly no longer a standalone media. And I've shown this slide again in past webinars, but again, I want to emphasize that marketers are using two, three, four, and even more media channels in direct marketing campaigns as a regular course of business. It's truly an all-channels-on media mix. Marketers are employing a broad mix of both print and electronic media channels with direct mail and email topping the list. And at this point, it's really my pleasure to introduce you guys to Bob Boucher of Cole Creative. And Bob's going to talk to you a little bit about his experience having worked with marketers and agencies and, and the recommendations that he has for you guys moving forward. Bob? Hey, thanks, Matt and Kim. I, um, first of all, this is a, a topic that is so near and dear to our hearts in the agency world. Our particular agency has been involved with digital print the solutions almost since their beginning. We helped AGFA roll out the Chroma Press, one of the pioneering digital print engines back in the early 90s. And we have been you know, kind of joined at the hip with digital print uh, services and the power of digital print ever since. And, so, and we've worked with the major manufacturers moving on from AGFA uh, through all the menu manufacturers and, and today including OSE. So this is something that we preach, have preached constantly and frankly I would love to see more and more of my uh, peer agencies uh, adopt more and more digital print just to raise the tide for everyone to be more aware of it. But um, I'd like to talk a little bit about how I perceive print service providers as marketing service providers and how I think they can best reach me as an agency, how they can talk to me and, and, and other folks in the agency such as um, uh, agency uh, principals and account managers and creative people, et cetera, not just the production folks, but the folks who are making creative decisions. Uh, let me start by saying several, about a year or two back, um, I held a focus group uh, for a digital print manufacturer that brought together some of the largest, uh, well, agencies of all sizes from around the world. Uh, and you can see some of the names here and some of the uh, in-house agencies as well. So you can see some large uh, independent agency names as well as uh, we had in-house representatives, agency representatives from folks like Disney and L.L. Bean and Blue Cross Blue Shield. And the purpose of bringing these folks together was to put them in a room with digital print providers, such as yourself. These are folks mainly in the graphic arts and commercial print, but uh, these were folks who wanted to hear from these agency folks. How could they position their services? And um, the first thing we did before we got into that was we rolled out all the various applications for digital print to these agency folks. And our intent was we wanted to first figure out you know, how aware are you of these types of applications, these digital applications? And secondly, we wanted to know, you know, what's your reaction to these? And what, after you hear about it, what would your interest be in using these? And then we said, okay, now that you know what, this was a two-day session, so uh, I'm running through it pretty quickly, but at the end of the day, we asked 
our agency focus group, if you will, to help these print service providers kind of develop their marketing messages and suggest sales support tools for them. So here's what we found out to uh, item one here. What was their awareness level of, did, again, this goes back a couple of years. So I think the awareness levels have raised uh, somewhat. But uh, to this group at least, they were, uh, to a person, uh, unaware, surprised, and enthused. Uh, so there was kind of a general lack of understanding, but general, genuine excitement for, for having learned about uh, the digital print application world, which they really knew very little about. A lot of these agency folks just said, you know what, our currency is the 30-second TV spot. And we just don't know a lot about these kind of, and we do a little bit of print, but we just don't know about digital print. So it just wasn't on the radar. So next we went and said, okay, now that you know about these, and we rolled out uh, personalized direct mail and collateral and um, large format signage and billboards and, and the idea that you could personalize all of these forms of print. And when they saw all of these applications, and we had live samples of all of them, <coughs> excuse me, there, again, they found them incredibly unique, creative, innovative, and inspirational. And so, and these were, uh, these people were not being paid to be there. There was no, <laughs> there was no incentive for them to, uh, to lie to us. If, if you will, they they were being quite honest and sincere with them uh, with their reactions. So after we got those reactions, we asked, okay, would you recommend digital print solutions to your client? And again, here is a kind of an anecdotal sampling of their reactions. One said, you know what, it's another. It's not going to replace all the other things that I sell. Basically, the thirty second spot for the but for the you know, to, to em uh, enlarge my service offering to my client, to differentiate myself, yeah, it's another arrow in my quiver that I'll definitely use where appropriate. One guy who was there from a large agency in Philadelphia said, you know what, I've got an RFP this morning <laughs> before he came down to the session. He said, you know, I've already started considering putting this into that RFP. One fellow said, or I think a woman said, you've shown me solutions to a problem I didn't even know I had. I thought that was the most telling thing is that, this is almost uh, had an iPod-like quality that we didn't know we wanted the iPad, but boy, once we got it, we loved it, and it was, uh, you know, a neat, an itch that frankly they didn't know they had. And one guy said, "You know, I haven't been this excited about print in ten years." And, you know, at the bottom, at the, at the end of the day, they said, "You know what? Why don't you guys communicate with us? Why aren't you telling us?" about these things. They were almost miffed, uh, if, if you will, in a way, to say, you know, we, we wish we had known about it before this, but better late than never. Um, so then we took this information into the second day of these focus groups and asked them, okay, what are the messages that you want to say? What, what should, and again, as I mentioned, there were di digital print service providers in the room with these folks, and we said to them, okay, what messages should be uh, should uh, the PSPs be sending to agencies and other marketers? And they said, well, first let's tell you what we don't want to hear because it just won't resonate with us. First of all, we don't care that you sell print. We don't care about how many colors on your press. We don't care about VDP. We know these are important features of what you do, but that's not what's important to us. We know that you can uh, provide personalized URLs. And uh, don't tell us that you offer design and creative services, frankly, because for a design and creative environment, that it's just not a message that will stick very much. Um, but okay, so that's on the on the negative side. On the positive side, okay, if these are messages you don't want to hear uh, from uh, from a PSC, what do you want to hear? And we bandied this about for quite some time, and they said, okay, what would the elevator pitch? And after talking about this for quite some time. This group of agency and marketer representatives said, you know, we, we suggest that you say, Mr. PSB, that you offer tools and technology that help marketers meet their key objectives. I mean, you, and you do. You have a bridge to, uh, to marketing uh, technology, for marketing technology that's available nowhere else, frankly. And they were very excited about it. And they say they would listen to that. They would hear that because that would hit their hot points. They said, okay, well, what are your solutions? Well, your solutions aren't VDP and your solutions aren't pearls. I said, your solutions are that you are giving me, as an agency, higher response to my direct mail and lead generation campaigns. You're giving me a measurable 
campaign tool, measurable multi-channel, as Matt was talking about, marketing campaign, stronger brand equity because I can control the use of my uh, brand and logo um, centrally. I can produce books more you know, quickly and more cost efficiently. As Matt talked about obsolescence, did you know, Mr. Marketer, that you can save 20 to 40% on obsolescence? And you know what? That's a message that also will resonate not just with marketers but will, with the CFO and the print buyers, uh, your traditional, maybe some of your traditional customers within enterprises. Uh, we love the fact that this is market-specific market point-of-sale and outdoor tools that can be customized to uh, segments, market segments, geographies, regions, languages, what have you. And we think you should be telling us that we can build strong relationships and customer loyalty. And also, you know, this ties in. People might think that print, uh, you know, pr uh, print and um, – Electronic communications on like are, are two separate things, but no, they see that this, what you provide as printers can be used as very personalized fulfillment to all the uh, efforts we make now online to develop relationships and, lead, and cultivate leads and, and, and bringing people into the sales funnel. So they think there's a real dovetailing effect here between what you provide as digital printers and what uh, is available through these new uh, offline and online marketing programs. Um, so anyways, that was the take. I would say, you know, we've been working with digital print. We've bought digital print for nearly 20 years now. And it's the people who can talk to us in, in marketing terms, in strategic terms, um, that, you know, we actually end up doing the most business with. Um, so it's really just kind of a language. It's a communications tool for you. Uh, or effort that you might want to undertake just to kind of reach uh, the marketing minds. Um, anyway, that's that's a quick anecdotal kind of review of because as a marketing service provider, it's your message that really is where it begins. You want to make sure you're talking to the right people and you're saying the right thing. And the people you can talk to in, a, in an agency are creative directors, account managers, some folks even thought it might be a media play, some, some of these agency folks, that some media buyers might be interested in hearing about this too. So um, you don't, you're not stuck down, in, down with a production person. <laughs> you really can bring these kind of messages right up the chain to account and creative. Uh, so anyways, Matt, back to you. Bob, thank you so much. <clears throat> That's great information and insight really from the agency. And Bob, I, you know, I was, I was listening to you talk and I was thinking, you know, it's, if it, 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 the switch from the conversation strikes me as almost a shift if we were talking about selling cars and it's less about how many miles per gallon you can get, but the fact that you can go from Boston to Philadelphia on one tank of gas. Yeah. Is that is that a similar analogy? Is that less of a focus on the hardware specifics and more a focus on the solutions and then results? Well, that's interesting. I think that um, sometimes I, you know, people buy cars because they love how they look. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, but I, I, I definitely think that in the world of marketing, we just have pain. You know, we all have our own respective professional pain points, and if you can tell me how to increase. Uh, you know, lead generation rates, or if you can tell me how to reduce costs and produce literature more effectively or to target my POS more precisely, I mean, I'm listening to that. I mean, frankly, uh, creative is kind of a la – in terms of marketing 101, it's, it, the, the effectiveness of a good marketing program is sort of 40% uh, uh, dependent on having the right audience. You're talking mm -hmm. about it. It's 40% dependent on having the right message and only like around, literally around 20% on the right creative. So uh, creative is sort of the last thing you should, everyone thinks, oh, it's the big, you know, cool headline or, or awesome picture that sells product. But boy, if it's talking to the wrong person and saying the wrong thing, sure. it really doesn't matter. Sure. That's great, so, though. So, um, anyways, hope that's great. I'm not sure that answered the question. I, you know, you know, I think it did, and I think it dovetails right into to where we're going to go next. And, and that oftentimes, um, you know, the next question that we get is, okay, you know, we understand that we need to make the investment and we need to make this transition, but what specifically? 
do we actually invest in? And as far as cost goes, you know, in the surveys and in the research that we've found is that half the companies that are now offering cross-media marketing services spent less than $25,000 with a quarter of them spending under $5,000. And the message here is that there really are low-cost options available to you for making this transition. So if the low-cost options are available, you know, what do you invest in? And here's where it gets interesting. We found that there's a pattern of evolution in the services that are being offered. Firms start with variable data. They start with web to print storefronts and digital asset management. And I think that comes back to, to what Bob has said about first understanding the right target and then also understanding the right message. And I think that by marrying some of these, these personalized communications with the right audience with the right message, I think that overall you're going to be able to help the marketers improve their bottom line and reach some of these pain points that Bob really talked about. And then the next transition, the next step was adding data services and pearl tracking and CRM. And the next phase is really to expand these capabilities into more extensive campaign management, data mining and analytics, and marketing automation. And here's the thing, is that, is that software providers really have caught up to demand. And by what I mean is, is that they have solid systems that service providers need. In the early days of VDP and web to print and cross media, it was like the wild, wild west. And printers either couldn't find the tools they felt fit their operation or thought it was just better to do it themselves. And those days are gone. Leave the software innovations to the experts. Focus on the core services of marketing and selling. And so once you've made the investment, then what do you do? And as we saw earlier, firms that are placing an emphasis on making this transition have made changes in the type of people they are hiring and the new roles they are creating with their organizations. Success in marketing and in making this transition is linked to business development and marketing. And repositioning your business needs to start with strategic marketing or a business plan. As Bob mentioned, I really like, I like what Bob said, is, is that awareness may be rising, but there's still... Uh, a, a far more opportunity for growth in this, in this field. And it's really about how do you reintroduce yourself to marketers and how do you bring about awareness to the services that you're offering that you can support them with. And it really starts for us with developing a strategic marketing plan. And if you think that developing a strategic marketing plan is something that only big fancy corporations need to do, you need to really think again. You need one too. A strategic marketing plan will help you better understand your business, better understand your customers, and develop your strategy for success. Most people fall into the trap of thinking that marketing just means advertising, it just means public relations or promotions. True marketing encompasses so much more than that. It involves everything from understanding the market to which you sell your products and services to choosing the specific tactics you'll use to reach that market. And, and this is actually where advertising and, and um, uh, developing a go-to-market strategy really plays into it. And according to the American Marketing Association, marketing encompasses everything that you do to attract customers and clients and keep them coming back and referring you to others. The process starts with the identification of the customer groups that a particular business can better serve than its target competitors. And once this group has been identified, a company can then tailor its product offerings, its pricing, its distribution, its promotional efforts, and its services all to that marketing strategy appropriately. In today's market, there are companies of all sizes that have really forgot that a lot of marketing is about planning. Right? So if a print service providers are performing marketing at all, tactically they're really focused on sales tools such as brochures, maybe occasional brochure or, or trade show, and their website. And print providers are notorious for complaining about business and the inability of their salespeople to deliver results. But the real question is this, you know, what are the owners and the senior managers doing to be proactive about developing strate a strategic marketing plan that's going to drive their business. And for us, a good marketing plan starts with the customer. You first need to identify your strategy and then determine what markets you want to serve. The graphic communication service provider needs to A, research the specific opportunities to better and more profit that are going to better and more profitably meet customer needs in an identified segment. B, define and develop products and service offerings to meet the customer needs. 
C, assess their market position and clearly articulate their unique value proposition. And finally, they need to select marketing communication media that reach the target audience and build awareness and develop a preconditioned prospects for salespeople. And all the companies that we're going to be discussing shortly started by identifying and researching a market, developing offerings that met the needs of their market, and then building out a new value proposition and communicating effectively to really reach that market. And there's two major components to your marketing strategy. One, how will your enterprise address the competitive marketplace? And two, how will you implement and support your day-to-day -day operations? And in today's very competitive marketplace, a strategy that ensures a consistent approach to offering your product or service in a way that will outsell the competition is crucial. In concert with defining the marketing strategy, however, you must also have a well-defined methodology for the day-to-day -day process of implementing it. Having a strategy is of little value if you lack the resources or the expertise to implement it. So once you've identified how you're going to change your business and what you're going to produce that actually meet your customer needs, you need to have a formal process for introducing those new products and product enhancements to your prospective market segments. And really for us, developing that go-to-market strategy begins with outlining your five Ps. And I'm sure that a lot of you on this webinar right now have heard about the five Ps, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna review them as they relate to the graphic communications business. First of all, products, as we discussed previously, service providers need to be leveraging solutions such as web to print, cross media solutions, data analytics and more as a new product or service offering and not just a tool for acquiring more print production. Price, pricing strategies need to be in line with what your market will bear, the value of the service that you're offering, and the competitiveness of, of how others in your field may be uh, uh, pricing their services and offerings. Placement strategies, placement really uh, uh, refers to um, what sort of sales distribution are you going to have? Is it going to be a direct sales versus um, uh, e-enabled sales? Is it going to be brokers? How are you really going to reach your target audience? People. So what are the profiles of the essential sales and support resources that will be needed, and how can you retool your workforce for making this transition? And lastly, promotion. How are you going to reposition your company, and what tools will you use to make your customers and prospects aware of new products and services? And various promotion strategies range from mass media, direct media, websites, social networking, sponsorships, direct sales, and much, much more. This year, InfoTrends has had the privilege of moderating a number of the MyPresco webinars, and in doing so, we've had the opportunity to talk to in depth with a number of OSA customers, many of which we've had participate on these webinars. And when we look at the five Ps and how they relate to a go-to-market strategy, often they can become abstract marketing statements. And what I want to do is share with you some examples of how OSA customers have leveraged these five Ps and used them as a foundation for transitioning their business. So, so let's get started and let's talk about products. And in today's market, whether we like it or not, putting ink and toner on paper is a commoditized manufacturing process. And the dynamics around product serving officer offerings are changing dramatically in the graphic communications world. Clearly, printers are investing in the latest digital technologies and will continue to do so over the long term. It's also clear that the way companies compete and differentiate themselves are changing radically. In many situations, product differentiation is giving way to the service differentiation and the integration of product service packages as the basis for offering a new product. With demanding clientels and the demanding economic climate, the best way to attract new customers and retain existing ones is to fine tune your existing products and services to suit market conditions and changing demands. There are thousands of printers out there and you need to create ways to stand apart from the crowd. Value added services is the only way to do that. The value added capability you offer is what you will differentiate you and your company. And when we think about value added services, you know, it's a term that is used to refer to the service options that are complementary to, but also ancillary to, a core service offering. 
while printed materials may be your core product, in a digital world, the ancillary services are value add. And the easiest way to start to look at value add is to analyze what some firms are actually doing today. And I want to introduce you guys to Research Data Incorporated. Research Data Incorporated is recognized as an industry leader in the data collection, data management, and database marketing industries. There are only a handful of companies that can offer the complete suite of capabilities that RDI offers from concept through execution, execution, they work with clients to deliver measurable, sustainable results for client organizations. They also understand that even in large organizations, the infrastructure, the resources, and the expertise required to successfully implement a complex survey project or a direct marketing program may not exist. And in some cases, even when these puzzle pieces do exist, there may be internal organizational or process constraints in place that could impede the timely deployment of a solution. RDI, again, a very heavy data-focused organization, has developed a partnership with a company called Lewis Creative Technologies, formerly Lewis Printing Company, and the partnership has been beneficial for both companies. So RDI has now gained direct access to Lewis Creative Technologies' digital printing capabilities as well as their robust binding and mailing operations. Lewis Creative Technologies, likewise, is able to leverage RDI to offer their existing clients a full-time staff of programmers, developers, and IT professionals. And the lessons that we learned from RDI and from this partnership are that first and foremost, the, the merging of these two companies and the partnership has allowed them to focus on long-term ongoing projects where they can partner and add maximum value for their customers. And while print is frequently a component of the solution, it's not always a key component. But data is a component of 100% of its solutions. The long-term business for ongoing projects creates an annuity stream that serves as a foundation for future growth. And they also don't believe they can be profitable or successful by doing a series of these one-off projects. And so through partnerships, these two companies have partnered to become a true cross-media services provider. And they've been able to expand their range of products that they offer their customers while still remaining true to their core business. No longer are data and print separate services. They are now a fully integrated product offering. Yeah, if I can add something here, Matt. That, Please. Uh, you're absolutely right. Data is sort of the holy grail, is the linchpin that holds all of this together. And if you can if you can own and manage uh, the uh, the customer's data, if you can manage that well, if you have you know control of it, you own the customer. Basically, owning the data is owning the customer. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those deep dark secrets yep. in the industry, yep. but it's true. Once you can uh, show that you're a reliable uh, you know data manager and implementer and applier, I mean, really that's the kind of value add service that is going to you know put you to the head of the line. Um, most of our, the organizations we work with, they struggle, might, they have realized this too. They've come, you know, the epiphany is that, uh, you know, oh, I got to get my data in line. I can no longer just rely on the 13 different, uh, you know, I'm throwing out numbers of sure. data silos in my organization. I've, you know, these silos are starting, to, especially in newer companies, these silos are, are disintegrating or they've never developed. And where data is kind of, uh, you know, cross-enterprise flowing everywhere. Everyone has access to the same data. It's up to date. They invest heavily in it. They realize that it's, you know, you know, the uh, the path to a good, you know, product and marketing future. Um, I just wanted to make another quick comment about um, what you're saying about the the importance of the customer earlier on, Matt. You were saying that. Uh, you know, so much of it is knowing your customer. Well, these days, custom, you know, marketers are learning to kind of take the lead of customers mm -hmm. as opposed to forcing things mm -hmm. on customers and mm -hmm. saying, what do you think? I mean, uh, OSE is a prime example. They they are very – they've got it down to a uh, – well, let me just say they get it. They get customers in, in a room for days. I was at a, one of these events last week where 15 customers were in a room hearing about – okay, here are the options for this, that, and the other technology. What do you think? What would you change? How would you best use it? Do you like it? Do you, whatever. And, uh, you know, for a company like OSE, they're committing, you know, a lot of money into sure, R&D. Sure. But they're taking the customer's input. And so they're kind of accomplishing many, many things. By doing that, they're, A, 
learning how to direct their investments more wisely. But yep. see, they're kind of sending a message that what you say as customers and uh, is important to us, and it, it, it defines the products that you're going to see. I mean, these aren't just little focus groups. These are very strategic decisions on on platforms and technologies and inks. And, I mean, and they are taking this data, and that word gets around. I mean, and that's another facet of marketing these days is word of mouth marketing. It's sort of like having your customer spread your word, and the, and the word in the street is that yeah, Osis is one of those companies mm-hmm. that gets it by tapping into the mind of the a potential buyer. You know, and I, and I think just like Osei gets it, I think that uh, the, the majority of companies out there, I think, are really interested in listening to customers and rolling out products that customers actually want and want to promote to their friends and want to support. And I think, you know, we, we talked about, you know, the, the – the importance of gathering data and the importance of, of merging that information into a broader communication strategy, I think what excites me about all of this is that while data may strike people as still being a very digital format, the combination of, 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 of data being leveraged both in email and direct mail and that kind of blend of cross communications I think is going to be incredibly effective. So, you know, if you can position yourselves as an organization where you're where you're either partnering or bringing in new uh, a workforce that can both support uh, understanding data as well as how it relates into a broader marketing mix, I think overall you're going to be able to support your company in a much more robust way. Absolutely. And and, and I want to – thanks, Bob. That was great. Um, so I want to move on to, to price. And pricing for a lot of companies, when we talk about um, how do you get into cross-media and how do you transition, pricing is really one of those areas that people really struggle with. And for a lot of companies that are moving into digital from an offset world, um, you know, the offset model of pricing oftentimes was a cost-plus model. Uh, you know, I, I was just talking with a company that said, said to me the other day, they said, Matt, you know, from an offset standpoint, we can we know how to price that we know exactly how the equipment runs we can price it in our sleeps when we get into these value added services that's really where we struggle and so so what is your pricing strategy and do you have the right price or not and if not you could be working for less money than your customers are willing to pay you and the price you charge really affects the amount of business and profit you know it's important to consider all the options that come up with an informed pricing strategy. A small increase or decrease in price can dramatically affect your business. And you have to justify your pricing strategy. You have to demonstrate that your product and service is valuable and worth what the customer is willing to spend. In in May of this year, we talked about how to price value-added marketing solutions versus traditional print services. And we talked to two OSE customers who had made that transition into value-added marketing services. Brian Russell was a digital production manager at R.R. R. Donnelly, who manages a $6 million digital print production business, had this really to say about their pricing strategy. Brian found that getting customers to pay for value-added services starts first with communicating to the C-level audience within the company the, the ROI that the services they provide returns. Companies will pay for services they recognize the return on their investment for, And this means reaching past the buyer, if possible, to the actual marketer. And Bob Dalkey Jr. of Vizzle took his digital business from zero digital print sales to being 15% of their total print sales in the span of two years. In the last two years, all their print revenue was based on offset print, and they've since adjusted that. Um, You know, they, they brought on their first digital print unit in 2009, and they, they added two more in 2010. So that's really a testament to the volume that they were able to deliver and, and the growth that they were able to drive through their business just within the span of two years. And what Bob found was that within the industry and even within his business, again, there was that mentality to do a strictly cost plus pricing model. And they've been working on switching to a model where they're asking customers to pay for the services that are not related to print, services such as database management, data mining, and even pre-press work that are all value-added services that support the final printed product. And when we ask service providers 
how does your company charge for customized creative solutions, what we found was that there is an array of different options and mechanisms. And what you're seeing here is that in a lot of instances, depending on the service, they charge an hourly rate. We'll also see that one of the dominant mechanisms for is charging for a per campaign rate. So again, it's, it's looking at the services that you're providing and saying, you know, instead of just charging what I know it's going to cost, my pre-press guy to set this up on an hourly rate, I'm going to look at the overall value that this campaign is going to deliver and, uh, and charge based on that overall value. And when talking with Brian and Bob, I think that one of the key messages that they communicated to us was the need to really create a bundled pricing structure. So um, while, while, you know, while customer preferences may dictate that an estimate needs to be broken out uh, by line item, creating a single bundled price allows the service provider to present that package in its entirety and walk through how that single figure can relate to the return on value added services you're providing. And while pricing needs to be competitive within your market, the ability to demonstrate how that price relates, again, to the return on investment is critical really in developing your pricing strategy. So now let's move on and talk about the place. And really, place, again, is, it's about distribution channels. And distribution channels are the how and where you reach your customers. They are the lifeblood of any business. Distribution channels can give you a competitive edge and provide insight into customer preferences and trends. They can also be a source of never-ending frustration. And selecting the right mix of sales channels and optimizing their performance is a critical issue facing today's graphic communication service providers. Exploiting the latest electronic and non-electronic means of reaching customers directly is an increasingly important part of developing a distribution channel. So the criteria that you really need to consider is, what's the greatest ease of entry against the competition? Is it hiring more sales reps? Is it developing a web to print solution? What's the lowest cost of entry in, relating to, in, in relation to the competition? Which offers the least financial risk and commitment to the trade? which is going to drive sufficient volume uh, to reach my short-term company goals, and which is going to allow me to go in at pricing levels that provide acceptable company revenues and profit margins. And in the age of the Internet, distribution options as we know them are changing. New distribution models will be driven by the way that the customer buys rather than the way that the vendors sell. And influencers will also be more important. Advertising and direct marketing agencies, associations are going to continue to play a more important role. It's no longer going to be possible to define distribution players in terms of a single role. It's going to have to be an integrated mix. And for print service providers, special, specialization will no longer be the source of higher margins, but the price of survival. All channels really need to be integrated, and all channels need to be e-channels. Customers are really going to be in control of how they are going to be buying print. Yeah, and again, I can echo that, Matt, um, if I may. Sure. Um, that uh, it, It's funny. I mean, customers, again, are really taking the reins of, of uh, much more control, I should say, of the marketing and selling world than they've ever had. And so while they have kind of flexed their muscle, uh, in terms of um, having all these options for ordering and procuring, uh, you know, they're still extremely dependent on the relationships with their providers. So uh, it's, a, it's an odd a dynamic shift in the relationship between uh, marketer and marketee, if you will. Sure. Um, you know, everyone, you know, we have dashboards for everything now, and all in the cloud, you know, people can go up and check on the status of anything at any time. Um, and uh, they love that, that access, they love that knowledge, and they, they're there all the time. But then again, they, they rely on the providers to make sure that that information is there and it's true. I, 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 yeah, I, it's, it's an interesting dynamic in that, in that you've got technology, but there's also a need to rely on the core expertise and the, and the personal uh, relationships that you have with your service providers and, and the knowledge that they have in their manufacturing process and then how they can deliver solutions. Yeah, and uh, as a Mac marketing service provider, if you are good at this, if you this is a value add that you know can mean money, frankly, uh, to be able to provide this kind of a service. I mean, this is the quintessential value added service. 
uh, giving your clients more access and control. Yep. There's a, there's a great uh, customer example that I want to share with everyone, and it's um, Ideal Printers. Um, Larry Vaughn, the founder of Ideal Printers, actually started the business off as a, as a print broker firm with three employees and an office space of 18,000 square feet, and they've expanded their operations and today run a facility that employs 78 people in a 40,000 square foot printing facility. And Ideal Printers has really gone from a distribution channel that was modeled on the brokering of print to one that is built on direct sales with the support of a highly skilled customer service team that actually has a stake in the sales process. In addition, they've made the shift to digital and are now offering web-to-print solutions designed to, again, support how customers want to buy rather than be sold. And so customers can place orders 24-7 knowing that they, have the, they, they can call on the resources of their strategic partner to help them with any questions or challenges that they may have. And so I want to move on to the people, and I think that people is really a critical component in making that transition. And the market has changed, and a printer isn't a printer anymore. Printers really need to change their mindsets. Uh, NAPL chief economist Annie Paparozzi had it right when he said, the commercial printing industry is changing structurally as well as cyclically. This means that in addition to nationwide economic pressures, the industry is undergoing a structural change in the form of redefined markets, clients, competition, labor force, critical skills, and value propositions. Value-added services provide an opportunity for printers that require a new set of skills in the workplace. And the technology change in today's market has really transformed the printing industry from a production worker to a knowledge worker industry. The business impact is clear. Increased knowledge in digital printing and variable data is essential. Everything is the internet. An understanding of digital print is a key requirement. Acknowledged alternative media sources such as mobile, social, networking, and online options need to be a part of the mix. And increased knowledge of niche markets and vertical or horizontal markets really is required. And when transitioning from a PSP to an MSP, the essential skills are required to operate the business where, again, you really need individuals that understand digital print, web to print, variable data, multi-channel communications, and new media. And for salespeople, the business acumen is key. It is important to have someone who understands the business economic forces, the market dynamics surrounding it, and the unique set of needs that arise from the combination of the two. MSP needs salespeople with a deep understanding of the industry and market conditions linked with the practical sales strategies and, tra and tactics that drive revenue growth and increase margins and decrease costs. MSPs are really seeking salespeople with different backgrounds and vertical market and marketing expertise. And, and in it, you know, again, we had another great OSE customer uh, today's graphics, graphics Incorporated, we had them on this past January to talk about how they've adjusted their workforce to meet the changes taking place within their local market. And TGI was founded in 1978 as a typographic services provider and quickly grew to become a leading offset and digital printer. And they recognized when they started to move into cross-media marketing that cross-media marketing services take a significantly longer sales cycle than traditional offset printing. TGI Communications transformed their workforce by separating the company into two divisions, one that was focused on traditional offset print sales and one focused on new digital marketing services. They then adjusted their compensation plans for the new workforce to a model that supported the longer sales cycle, and they brought on someone with marketing experience who could help aid traditional sales reps with when they pursued more marketing-focused sale calls. By adjusting their workforce to meet the changes in their market, TGI has positioned themselves to expand aggressively into new digital markets while still maintaining their traditional offset business. And the final P is promotion. And, and I think as we come back to this, this concept of awareness and getting, you know, how do you make this transition and how do you leverage the five Ps to go out and successfully communicate with marketers and position your services that you're going to be offering, customers and prospects really need to know who you are and the value you deliver. And so the question is, how do you do that? And the answer is, of course, marketing. 
And developing a new customer base or expanding a share of business with a current client begins with ensuring that all these customers are aware of the services that you provide. Awareness leads to consideration as a potential supplier. If the print service providers is considered in more sales cycles, its hit rate or close rate for new business should increase. In the world of printing, owners and managers need to precondition the market to facilitate sales. They have responsibility for assessing the best mechanisms available to build visibility with targeted customers and prospects, with the end result should be improved sales productivity. And today's multi-channel, multimedia marketing technology really allows you to promote your company in ways never possible before. But how do you leverage these tools in a way that makes good business sense? And are you, are you using technology to deliver your message in the most compelling and effective way? And what was considered futuristic approach has now become a staple of both business to business and business to consumer communication. With today's generation of high-tech users, the use of multimedia and cross-media strategies is essential for better communications. And when we asked companies who, have, who offer cross-media marketing services what has been the most effective in lead generation for, for cross-media marketing services, direct sales, networking, direct mail, Pearl campaigns and email were among the top most five effective marketing strategies. And this really tells us that you need to invest in your sales staff and train them. You also need to use your own cross-media marketing tools, not just to help your customers' business, but also help grow your business as well. And Wally Deshu, the president of and CEO of LithXO, Lith, Litho Excel, did just this when he transitioned his business. Uh, as the president and CEO, he really focused on identifying target markets and building out a strategic promotion and marketing strategy to go after those target markets. And like many of you, while well, he did much of this through direct sales, however, he trained his sales staff on how to talk to the C-level audience. And his rules of engagement with the C-level audience were simple. No samples or estimates, meaning with veto only, not the buyer or the managers, listen and keep your mouth shut, do a complete assessment of the opportunity of the market, no discussion of printing, pricing was presented at the end as a total package in a proposal form, professional appearance and a strong business acumen, and do your homework. Really understand the company that you're going after and how you're going to position your services and products and talk to them in a marketing form versus coming at them as a printer. And so I want to circle back and just and, and, and say that the, the five P's really are tools that you can use to help determine uh, what your go-to-market strategy should be and how best to accomplish that. And we've seen very successfully OSA customers implement these strategies in helping them transform their business and in, in developing their go-to-market strategy. We're really operating in a world where people are wearing more and more hats and the goals they're trying to accomplish are being measured and monitored empirically. And you need to consistently be aware of what is working within your markets, what isn't working, and how to adjust your business to meet these changes. And again, what are the benefits to change? Well, the benefits to change really in the, in, in the transition into cross-media is an increase in digital print volumes. Respondents that we've surveyed reportedly reported that their digital print volumes have increased by an average of 13.7% almost a 15% increase. And the top reasons that firms were offering these cross-media marketing services really were new revenue streams, expand their customer base, and deliver higher profit margins for the company as a whole. So I want to leave you with these recommendations. First, it's an evolution, not a revolution. Cross-media participation requires a natural service offering that starts with variable data, web storefronts, basic data services, and personalized URL capability, and expands to more complex capabilities such as data mining and marketing solutions. It takes time to do. It's, it's an organic process. You, don't, you can start small, as we saw. It's, it can be a low-cost investment, but you need to make this, the, this, the change now, and you need to start taking the steps to transition your business. And second, it requires a focus on business development and marketing within the PSP organizational leadership team. And lastly, it requires a focus on specific vertical and horizontal target market opportunities. Printers need to go back to school on marketing and understand strategy for their own business and those for their customers. 
And I want to leave you with this. Jack Welch once said that an organization's ability to learn and translate that learning into action rapidly is the ultimate competitive advantage. I hope that these webinars have provided you with the opportunity to learn how about the changes shaping our industry and give you some idea on how you can use these changes to your advantage. I want to thank Bob from Cole Creative for joining us today, and I want to thank each of you for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us.